Hey, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Now, the reason peacemakers are blessed is because they are the children of God. Yet we, many believers today, are not aware of this biblical identification between the two. They don't realize that if they are to be called the children of God, then being peacemakers is not an option on their part. Okay, we believers must cultivate the fruit of peace so that we may minister peace to others, thus making them into peacemakers, thereby qualifying them to be called or recognized as his children. Now the Greek word for children, we've looked at this uh, word before, uh, that Greek word for children in Matthew 5, 9 is actually huios, uh, it's spelled H-U-I-O-S, which means son. And it denotes the relationship of an offspring to his parent, with the emphasis upon the nature of the parent being evident in the child. Our Heavenly Father desires that his children develop into peacemakers, to be develop into becoming the mature sons of God, those who are recognized as his offspring by their God-like natures and qualities. And one of the most identical of these qualities is peace. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 is, we're told to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, people who are not peacemakers, essentially that verse says, well, they, they will not see the Lord. For this is a clear indication that they are not truly sons of God and joint heirs with the Prince of Peace. So we as believers, all believers, if we're born again, all believers in Christ at least have that seed of peace in our hearts. And if we desire to see the Lord, then it's of the utmost importance that we cultivate and develop the fruit of peace that he's placed in our lives. Now, one characteristic of peacemakers is their non-resistance to evil. Uh, many Christians, however, they're, they're, they're always concerned that they obtain their rights and and express their opinions and take whatever actions that they feel are justified in every situation that rises against them. You know, that, that, that following eye for an eye statements are, are representative of those prevalent in the body of Christ today and are sometimes even taught as acceptable attitudes for the child of God. Well, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You cost me something by your actions, I'm going to sue you to get back what you took from me. You wrong me, and I'll make you suffer for it. You killed my dog, I'm going to kill your cat. And as a result of a lack of proper teaching in the church today, unfortunately, there's little discernible between Christians and non-Christians concerning this matter of repaying evil for evil. Sad situation has caused the fruit of peace to wither amongst the pews. And see, as this teaching of non-resistance to evil is reestablished in the church, it will create an atmosphere in which the fruit of peace will flourish and out of which true peacemakers will arise. You know, this renewal must occur in the body of Christ today because our recognition by the world as the sons of God is dependent upon it. According to Romans 8, 19, the day of our manifestation is drawing nigh. There's no time to waste, folks. Okay? We Christians must be making ourselves known, and we do that by our attitudes and by our actions. And this troubled world will easily recognize peacemakers as the children of God. Just as Pilate, I mean, he marveled greatly, Scripture tells us, at the non-resistance of Jesus to, the, to, to when he was being crucified. And the end result of returning good for evil, of suffering injustice without murmuring, without retaliation, is that it makes it evident to the whole world which of its inhabitants are truly the sons of God. And I'd like you to turn with me, please, if you will, to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and we'll look at verses 38 through 42. Matthew 5, verses 38 through 42. It says, You've heard that it is said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you take, and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. See, Jesus clearly stated that the law of retaliation uh, permitted under the Mosaic dispensation is abolished. Okay, it's been done away with under the dispensation of grace. Amen. Jesus instituted the law of love when he taught in verse 39 of that chapter, resist not evil. 
See, believers today should respond to evil only with acts of love. It's no longer an eye for an eye. It's no longer a tooth for a tooth, but rather it's a kind word for malicious slander or, or a charitable response for an evil action or a willingness to freely give up possessions that are, are, that are taken away by force. It's the love of God given to undeserved people. You know what we call that? It's called grace. Amen? You mark down Romans chapter 12, verses 20, uh, 19 through 21. Uh, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it's written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if an enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For in do sowing, you heap coals of fire on his head. But be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, the Greek word that is translated avenge in that, in that verse, uh, again, my pronunciation is probably off, but e e d k e o, e d sorry e k d i k e o, means to inflict pain or harm in return for harm or pain that is inflicted on oneself. And according to this passage of scripture, God does not want His children to attempt to run around to to extract their pound of flesh by punishing those who have wronged them. This does not mean, however, that there, that there are not some who deserve to be punished, okay? It just means that it is not our place to dole out that punishment. Verse 19 says, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. It means that God wants his children to remain in the role of peacemakers and not to infringe upon his role, God's role, as avenger. But unfortunately, a lot of believers, we're trying to play God. And we can avoid this dangerous snare by always being careful to minister love and peace and reconciliation to our enemies. And we leave vengeance and retaliation of the place and the person that it rightly belongs. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. So it's only as we cultivate and develop the fruit of peace uh, will we be capable of living as the true sons of God. As soon as we try to fight our own battles, Okay? We, and we can't do that. The battle belongs to the Lord. We can't fight our own battles. Okay, We lose our peace when we try to fight our own battles. And we open the door for a spirit of retaliation to come in. And we fall into this trap of the enemy. We'll soon find ourselves driven to continually being that place of returning evil for evil. And the end result will be disastrous. See, after Peter, he attempted to defend Jesus by slicing off the ear of one of the men who came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. What did Jesus say? Matthew 26, 52. He said, put up again thy sword into its place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. See, today Jesus is telling us, his, his disciples today, put away the sword of retaliation, let it, lest it be used against you. Put away the sword of retaliation unless it be used against you. And said he desires that we follow his example. What did he do? Luke 22, 51. He, Jesus answered and said, suffer you thus far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. Okay, I'd like to close. You were in Matthew chapter 5. I want us to look at verses 44 and 45. Uh, it says, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay, so it's only as we cultivate and develop the fruit of peace that we will have the strength to bestow the love and the blessings and the kindness, okay, and also our prayers upon those who either outwardly or subtly Resist us with evil. And obeying this particular teaching of Jesus will make us overcomers. Amen. That's what we need to be. We want to be overcomers. So obeying this teaching of Jesus will make us overcomers so that we may be the children of our Father which is in heaven. It is for this reason that peacemakers are blessed because they are the children of God. Amen. Well, I'm going to leave it there this morning. Uh, we're going to continue next week uh, delving into this, uh, this fruit of peace. Uh, we're going to look at ways that we are able to cultivate peace in our lives. So I want to thank each one of you for being here today. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.
Yeah, I just finished.